I'd like to welcome Sean Leninger, Director of Retail from Temescal Wellness. Temescal Wellness is our exclusive conference sponsor this year, and she's going to to give us some, give us an introduction to the therapeutic cannabis program in New Hampshire. Sean. Thank you, Judy. I am going to just share my screen so that I can get my presentation up here. All right, well, thank you for having me. Um, as Judy said, my name is Sean Leninger. I am Director of Retail for Temesco Wellness. We do have uh, three retail cannabis sites here in New Hampshire. We're located in Dover, in Lebanon, and most recently in Keene, which is where I am today. So we have been here for over five years now, serving the New Hampshire qualified patients. Um, safe and reliable therapeutic cannabis. So I'm gonna go through a brief overview kind of of the program and of we, what we offer. And then um, if anyone has questions, um, happy to answer them or have follow-up after the call, I can provide my contact information. So the therapeutic cannabis program in New Hampshire um, is how patients apply. So basically the state of New Hampshire has their own um, department through Department of Health and Human Services that's called the Therapeutic Cannabis Program. Um, all the applications and forms that patients and caregivers need to apply to the program are located on the DHHS TCP webpage, which I do have just a link to here, but it's a really easy search to find it. Um, essentially, patients have to fill out a portion of an application and then their provider, whichever provider is recommending them to the program, has to fill out a written certification. So the big point here is that it's not a prescription. It's not a doctor needing to kind of tell you exactly what to take, when to take it. Some doctors um, are a little hesitant just because they're not really sure about cannabis yet. So it is just certifying that they believe therapeutic cannabis could be beneficial uh, for the patient who has a qualifying condition under the statute in New Hampshire. Um, patients do regularly reach out to us as a trusted therapeutic cannabis provider um, to try to get information on providers who are willing and able to certify for the, for the program. Not all providers are able to and not all providers are comfortable doing so. So we do keep a running list, which is quite extensive at this point, of providers who are willing to work with patients and help them get into the program and also typically advise them a lot more than, than providers who may not be as comfortable with cannabis. Um, so patients and caregivers can reach out to us if they're interested in getting access to this list, if they want to find a provider who's willing to certify them. And then any providers who are interested in being on this list can reach out to us and let us know that they would like to be included. And then we have them on the list that we give to these many uh, potential patients who reach out to us. Qualifying conditions in New Hampshire. Um, these are changing yearly. So every single year, this list gets a little bit longer as they kind of add more um, conditions and symptoms that allow more patients access to therapeutic cannabis in New Hampshire. So it is a quite extensive list. Um, but again, as I said, this is kind of changing every year. So things like multiple sclerosis, um, ulcerative colitis, Parkinson's disease. Um, these are all things, epilepsy, I know is a big one that's kind of talked about in relation often to CBD. Um, but all of these are qualifying conditions, which also have to be accompanied by one or more of the following symptoms. So a symptom can go with any of those qualifying conditions, but in order to qualify for the program with one of those conditions, the patient also has to be exhibiting one or more of these symptoms. So often these symptoms do go hand in hand with the qualifying conditions, but in addition to this list of conditions and symptoms, there are also standalone conditions in New Hampshire, and this is an area where they have added quite a bit to it over the past few years. So things like moderate to severe post-traumatic stress disorder, um, moderate to severe chronic pain, these really opened the program up quite a bit because there are many people struggling with these 
conditions in New Hampshire um, who previously may not have been able to qualify under just the strict list of conditions and symptoms that New Hampshire had. Uh, autism spectrum disorder is the most recently added. So that is now a standalone qualifying condition. Um, for people who are under 21, there are specific requirements, um, all of which are listed on the DHHS Therapeutic Cannabis Program webpage. So um, once patients come to us, that's when we can really start helping. So we do recommend that all patients consider getting a caregiver. Um, basically, in the state of New Hampshire, no one can enter our alternative treatment centers, which is what we call our dispensaries, without a New Hampshire state-issued registry card for the therapeutic cannabis program. So this can be a patient card or it can be a caregiver card. So spouses, um, caregivers, children, any of these individuals unfortunately can't come in with the patient or come in for the patient unless they apply for a caregiver card through the state of New Hampshire. Um, it is a, a fairly simple process. The state is continuing to try to make it easier for people because it is very beneficial for patients to not only be able to have someone that can come in with them, which often just makes people feel a little bit more comfortable, but also who can come in for them when they may not be able to, whether on a consistent basis or just here and there, you know, things come up for our patients and having someone who can come pick up their therapeutic cannabis for them can be really beneficial. So again, all of those forms are on DHHS Therapeutic Cannabis Program webpage. Um, very easy to fill out. And as I said, um, we are always here. We're always happy to help. So people regularly reach out to us kind of throughout the application process, whether for a patient or caregiver, and we can always point them to the right resources or answer any questions that they have. So the endocannabinoid system, um, this is kind of how and why cannabis works. So the endocannabinoid system is a neuromodulator system found all throughout our body. So in places like our brain, in our digestive system, our immune system, musculoskeletal, it's pretty much everywhere. And so it really has an impact on many different processes. Um, the system itself is essentially comprised of receptors and enzymes that synthesize and metabolize our endocannabinoids and the receptors they act on. So you hear the word cannabinoids associated with cannabis. Well, we have phytocannabinoids, which come from the cannabis plant, which mimic our endocannabinoids, which are cannabinoids that already exist within our body that make up this endocannabinoid system. So that's really why cannabis can work so well within our body. It's kind of designed very similar to molecules that already exist in our body. So the endocannabinoid system, as I said, because it's all throughout the body, it impacts essentially every system you can think of. So it impacts pain receptors, appetite, mood, memory, GI function, inflammatory response. Um, and because it's connected to the immune system, also immune response. So the way that it's working within the body, as I said, cannabis has what are called phytocannabinoids. So phytocannabinoids and then other kind of molecules within the plant, terpenes and flavonoids, these have an impact on how the plant looks, how the plant smells, how it tastes, um, but also how it affects you. And that's why cannabis has different strains or different varieties um, because all these different combinations of things within the cannabis plant make each one function very differently within our body. So phytocannabinoids are things you've heard of. Um, it's just a big word for them. So there's THC, CBD. These are the big buzzwords that you always hear connected with cannabis. These are just chemical compounds derived from the cannabis plant. So as I said, they function very much like our own endocannabinoids. It's just getting more of them into our body and concentrated in different areas so that it can have the desired effects on the systems that we're looking for. So when cannabis is ingested, whatever delivery form, whether inhaled or um, ingested through an edible, it is binding to CB1 and CB2 receptors located all throughout the endocannabinoid system. Each cannabinoid is going to produce different effects depending on which receptors and where in the body they are binding to. So as I said, two most popular cannabinoids still are THC and CBD. 
THC, um, long word for it is tetrahydrocannabinol. And this is a cannabinoid that is associated with the high of cannabis. So this is what they call the psychoactive cannabinoid. Um, but that is not its only function. It can also be extremely helpful for symptoms like pain, nausea, poor appetite, muscle spasms. Um, THC can be a really, really wonderful compound when you're using it therapeutically and really know the right kind of dose for it. Uh, CBD is um, much more popular recently, and there is kind of a whole explosion of a, a market for CBD outside of the therapeutic cannabis or medical marijuana space. Um, so CBD is non-intoxicating, meaning that it doesn't come with the same psychoactive high that THC is known for, but it can be extremely helpful with many different symptoms, um, really connected to anti-inflammatory, and then of course pain coming from anti-inflammatory response. Um, so it really does impact many different systems throughout the body, and there is so much more research being done on CBD all the time. Um, the kind of interesting thing about CBD as opposed to THC is it's really working indirectly on all the systems throughout your body. So when you use it consistently over time, it does tend to have a much better effect than just the kind of one-off um, really instant effect that THC can have. So often when people try it once and really don't find that it's doing much for them, we try to get them to kind of stick with it, give it a little bit of time. CBD is something that works better the longer you kind of let it do its thing, whereas THC comes with that kind of instant effect. CBD and THC do work much better together. So this is what is kind of, you know, lacking from just the CBD market is that THC can actually enhance it. They work really well together. They kind of help one another work better. There is something that they call the entourage effect with cannabis. And that means that all the components that make up the plant, so THC, CBD, all the many other cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, these all combine to give really unique and really wonderful therapeutic effects. And so when you kind of just extract individual bits and pieces, um, it can lose that kind of overall therapeutic effect that they can have when working all together. So the really interesting thing about CBD in combination with THC is it can really modulate or kind of lower the psychoactive effect that comes from THC, which many of our patients are looking to avoid or at least just mitigate, not have it be the kind of central thing that they're looking for. Um, so even just you know a one-to-one -one ratio, so equal parts CBD and THC, can result in a 30 to 50% reduction in the psychoactive effect. So kind of the higher you get with your proportion of CBD to THC, typically the less of that high or psychoactive feeling you will have. So once you get to a four to one ratio of CBD to THC, it will typically result in minimal psychoactivity. Um, so people can really adjust those ratios depending on what they're looking for and what works best for them. Um, but really the combination of the two gives you the great effects of both throughout the body and on the many different systems. So it tends to give people the relief that they're looking for, but you can have a more kind of functional process with it where you're not necessarily getting the high if that's something that you're looking to avoid, um, which even sometimes depending on time of day, People may be looking for more of that at night to help them sleep, but they may be looking for less of that psychoactive effect during the day to make sure that they still feel completely able to function and do what they normally do throughout the day. There are many, many different modes of delivery when it comes to cannabis. So this is one of the really great things about it. It's very individualized. So we have many patients come in and they're only comfortable with flour. That's what we call the dry plant material that you smoke or vaporize. And that's all they wanna do because that's what they're comfortable with. That's what they know. That's perfectly fine. We have other patients come in do not want to smoke at all, don't even want to hear about it, that's completely fine too. So that's the great thing is that there are these different delivery methods. We make products um, to suit every need and everything that patients are looking for. Inhalation is, of course, kind of the oldest um, method. It's very simple and straightforward. It's smoking or vaporizing the flower, 
or now concentrates, which you get into a much more potent form of kind of extracted cannabis. Sublingual preparations. These would be things like tinctures or an oral spray. Um, the great thing about these is they're pretty quick acting. Inhalation is the fastest acting method, but sublingual is right after it. So it does absorb right into the mucosal membrane in your mouth. And so you tend to get a pretty quick effect from it. Um, whereas something like uh, ingestion, which can be in many forms still, whether it's a drink, whether it's an edible, whether it's a capsule, um, it takes many different forms, but you are ingesting the cannabis and it's going through your digestive tract to be absorbed. So it does take longer to take effect. So ingestion is kind of a longer period that you're waiting for the effect to kick in. So a longer onset time, but the duration is also longer. So with this um, form, it does tend to last much longer. You just have to plan ahead for the time period that it takes to kick in. Um, and then topicals are really wonderful for localized symptom relief. So when you have an area that's really bothering you, a topical can be great for it. So things like a salve or a lotion, um, there are sometimes transdermal methods which do go into the bloodstream, whereas other topicals are not going to enter your bloodstream, they're just going to be for that localized relief. So again, a lot of different ways to ingest cannabis and a lot of different products to go with each way. So we have a really extensive menu. You can always hop on TomascoWellness.com and look at our menu and see the many different forms of cannabis. We do consult with everyone on their first visit and make sure we go through all these different methods and products and what they mean and what they can be good for. So it is, as I said, a very, very individualized process for everyone. Everyone's looking for something different. Everyone feels comfortable with very different things. So we try to make it um, very much about the patient picking what they feel comfortable with, what works for them. And then it's just a journey of, of finding that. So managing your symptoms, um, this is kind of where it all comes in. So this is where you look at the different products, the different onset times that they have, the different durations, and really start to dig into, you know, what are you looking for? What symptoms are you experiencing? And then what products might match that? So for chronic symptoms, many patients do report using ingestion and topical methods. These are long acting. So these may take one to two hours to start feeling the effects, but then they can last for a good six to eight hours. So it can be really nice long lasting relief for whatever symptoms you're looking to manage with it. Um, whereas breakthrough or intermittent, um, some patients are using inhalation or sublingual. Again, the benefit to these methods is that they kick in much quicker. So rather than having to wait that one to two hour onset time with ingestion, it's pretty quick. It tends to be uh, one to five minutes for inhalation and maybe five to 15 minutes for a sublingual preparation. So some patients are just using one or the other of these methods. Some patients find that they need a combination. We have many, many patients dealing with chronic pain, whether it's from a condition or you know, an injury. And sometimes it takes more than one method. I think everyone dealing with chronic pain is aware of that. So sometimes you need that long acting relief, but you may still have breakthrough symptoms in the meantime. And so having a method on hand, at least for when you need it, for that quick acting relief can be extremely helpful. Dosing. I'm so, so sorry. sorry. We have, have to stop the online monitoring program. program. Um, um, but anyone, anyone can contact you through, through the, the, the uh, website, website on our, on, on our con conference web page. Your contact information is available. So thank, thank, you thank you so, so much. much. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, my pleasure. Feel free to reach out um, any questions or anything. We're always here and always happy to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's time, time for a breakout session now. now. And Anna will explain, explain how this works. works.